Hey guys, Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. I've had a number of people ask me, how do you create that James Bond gun barrel effect? So I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So what we're going to do is start with a blank document. Right now I've got one. I'll, I'll create a new one just so you know exactly what I did. Um, and we're just going to make it 800 by 800 and let's fill it with black. So we can just choose the background color here and make it black. And just click OK. So essentially what you've got is exactly that. So I just made another one for you. All right. So what we want to do is, is a couple of things we can need to do is one is to create that rifling effect. And I've got a great little uh, technique here for this. So I'm just going to create a new document here. But before we do, what we need to do is find the exact center here of this uh, document. Really easy. We're just going to go up under view and uh, we're going to go down to the guide layout and just create a new guide layout. And what you want to do is just set it to two and two. So that's two columns, two rows, and that will automatically show you the center. Now, if you don't have the luxury of um, having Photoshop CC, all you do is just fill it and hit Control T and I'll bring up free transform. And notice you can see the points there and you can actually just drag those guides into those points there. So I'm just going to undo that because we don't need to do that. That's just for everybody else. All right, cool. So moving ahead, what we're going to do now is create the actual uh, rotating shapes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to grab the, uh, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to use pixels. Make sure you're on a blank layer. So we've got a new layer there and then just hit the uh, white for the foreground color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag out here to make um, a little square and I'm holding the space bar. I can kind of move this and that's looking pretty good. And I'm just going to release that. All right, cool. So that's a good starting place. So I'm going to hit control T right now. And what I want to do is make this bigger. So once we warp it, we're not going to have it um, show the ends. We don't want that to happen. So I'm going to hit the alt key. That would be option. And as I do that, notice it drags out both ends. See that? So we're just going to drag it out, make it nice and big. Wonderful. Okay, so what we need to do now is duplicate this. So Control J or Command J on Mac. We'll duplicate it and then we're going to hit Control or Command T for free transform. And you'll see the little arrows will appear there. Hold the Shift key and that'll constrain this to 45 or actually 30 degree increments and then just go across. All right, so we've created a little cross here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to merge these. So with that top layer, hit Control E. And that is E for elephant. And what it will do is merge those into one layer. Now we want to duplicate this again. Control J, Command J. Control Command T again for free transform. And then we're just going to drag this out. Hold the shift key down. And there we go. So we've got something that kind of looks a little bit like a Union Jack kind of a thing. And now we want to merge these again. So I'm going to hit Control E. And then, so essentially what we've got is we've just got a black background with this little white kind of a cross kind of a shape. Now, if I look at the logo though, it's not quite accurate. If you look at the logo, it's a little narrower in the center than it is on the outside. So I figured the fastest way of doing this is a technique I'm gonna show you right now, rather than having it go in there and reshape these one at a time, that's too slow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the filter and we're gonna go down to distort and then we're gonna use the pinch. And then if you use this pinch a filter, I'm going to pull it all the way up. What it does, notice what it does here is it just changes the shapes of these things. So I'm going to pinch it here and notice what that does is it makes it narrower on the inside than it does on the outside. If you want to apply it a second time, we can do that. Just choose filter, pinch again. Notice the last used filter will be at the top. And if it's too much, let's have a look. How's that look? That looks pretty good. All right. Awesome. So that's a good start. Now what we want to do is we want to make this spin. We want to get that twirly little uh, part to it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up under the filter and we're going to choose to distort. And now we're going to go down to twirl. So filter, distort, twirl. And right now we've got a setting of about 180. And that should be pretty good. So let's click OK to apply it. And there we go. We're starting to get that nice little effect. All right. There's a couple more things we want to do here. 
One is we want to put a little white bit in the middle. So let's just grab our marquee tool with the elliptical marquee. And I'm going to go in the very, very center here. And I'm going to hit the Alt and the Shift key. Alt or the Option makes it drag out from the center. And then the Shift, what that's going to do is constrain our movements. So let's make our barrel opening, hmm, I don't know, yay big. Now, before you fill this, what we want to do is just create a new layer. It's a good idea to have this on a separate layer, and you'll see why soon. So, um, with white as the foreground color, as you can see over here, I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option, Backspace or Delete, and Control D, and that creates the circle in the middle. Now, one of the things I noticed looking at the logo is this has a little bit of a stroke on it. So, I'm going to go here, go under the effects, and I'm going to create not Babylon and Boss, but that was nice to turn that on. Uh, we're going to do the stroke here, and I'm just going to set that to black. And there we go. That's looking pretty good. All right, we're getting closer. Now, there's a couple more things we want to do to this. Uh, one of the things we want to do is maybe put something in the middle here. So I'm just going to go over here to the Move tool. And then I've got this uh, image here, just a silhouette I grabbed from Adobe Stock. And I'm just going to drag and drop that into the center here. And you can search. Notice it's just still, there's a number, the image number. So you can actually find that if you want. And you could license it if you wanted. I don't know if I'm going to bother because I just want to show you for the demo here. And I'm just going to put that in there. Awesome. So what I need to do, though, is make sure that that fits inside that circle. So I'm going to grab that layer notice it's directly above the circle there and if i just hold the alt key or the option key i can click on that and notice it'll just clip it inside that circle so you know you could cue the music da, 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 you know do the whole bond thing if you wanted here awesome all right so this is uh let me just hit control h and that will hide the um those little grid Good marks I've got there. All right, so this is kind of like a very vectory version of it. So now I'm going to show you how to add a few more details. So what we're going to do is now I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to create a little box around this. I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to go there. And notice with white as a foreground color, I'm just going to add that. All right, so that's on this new layer, just a little box there. And now I want to just kind of wiggle this up a little bit. So we're going to choose filter and then we're going to go down to distort. And then under distort, there's a couple of options. We could be using wave or zigzag, but I'm going to choose zigzag um, and see what kind of an effect we can get here. Let's zoom out a little bit. So what we're looking for is just to kind of make those edges a little rough. So you can see that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little much. Yeah, I don't mind it. So what I've got there is the amount, turn the amount all the way up. You can change the amount of ridges there. I'm going to drop those a little bit to three. Style around center. And then just click OK. And notice it creates that kind of wiggly effect. So what we need to do is drop this down in opacity. There we go. And it gives us that kind of gray, grayish kind of color going in the background. And you'll, you'll find out about the amount of gray you want there. So what I want to do is just kind of twirl this a little bit more. So we're going to go back to our filter. We're going to go down to distort again. We're doing a lot of distortion today. And then we're going to grab our twirl. And we're just going to keep the same settings we did before, which was 180. And it just kind of creates just an interesting effect. Now, if we're going to be doing it this way, though, what we want to do, though, is make these now black. So just selecting those, just hit Control i for invert and um, now they're black now obviously we need to pull this down a little bit so we're going to pull this down underneath there and pull this over the top so what we're trying to do here if we hide the background you can see we're just putting our um, barrel kind of uh, rifling effect above this kind of reflection so what we need to do now is just make this pop a little bit so if we go under effects bevel and emboss and if you look there we just get this little bevel and emboss effect that kind of creates this interesting effect there so what we've done here is we've got an inner bevel depth all the way up and you can play around with the size a little bit and all we're trying to do really is just make these edges kind of stand out a little bit more in fact let's take that depth down there we go and now we can play around with the size 
Um, there's just a little bit more. There we go. And you just want to play around with it. So here's the settings I've got here. So I've got my angle set to 90, 30, maybe turn on the anti-aliasing and click OK. So there's another uh, kind of a variation of that. So anyway, just having some fun with that. Um, hopefully this helped you a little bit and uh, I'll be adding a new tutorial every week. So don't forget, hit the subscribe button there so you'll get to see my new Photoshop tutorial every week. Um, hit that like button if you like this, add a comment and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. I'm Colin Smith.